Good morning. The message this morning is entitled, Tested by Fire. I will be in several scriptures this morning, and I, um, I just want to say something that I know will bless us and set us free in ways that we can never imagine. Who's going through a trial and tribulation like never before right now? Who's going through some things that just seem so, so difficult? If we are tested by the fire of God, then we can quench the fires of hell. I want you to hear that this morning. You feel like the fires of hell are just raging against you. But if we are tested by the fire of God, we can quench the fires of hell. Jesus said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. And yet, we see sadly more and more people who confess Christ just falling in great numbers to just incredible deception in this nation and in this world. And that's not, that is not God's plan for, for His church. His church is to be victorious. His church is to, is to live and to not die. And so in order for us to be the Christian who God has called us to be, we must be tested by fire. We must be tested by fire. If we are tested by the fire of God, then we can quench the fires of hell. Suffering will come to all in this world. Suffering for the cause of Jesus sets us apart from, dying, from a dying world. Now, there's different types of suffering in this world. There's suffering for, for the name of Jesus. There's suffering for the wrong decisions that, that you make in your life, and you have to suffer the consequences. There's different types of suffering. But the type of suffering that we need to talk about this morning is the suffering for being a Christian, suffering for being a child of God, suffering for, for claim, claiming Jesus as your Lord and Savior, for proclaiming that, and you're being persecuted or you're going through suffering. Many various of trials and kinds of suffering. But that is what I would like to talk to you about this morning. Suffering for the cause of Jesus sets us apart from a dying world. But many churches today do not understand or do not want to acknowledge this honor and privilege to suffer, or should I say be tested by fire. See, a wildfire burns everything in its path. If it is not contained, a wildfire will burn everything that is in its path. Unleashed fire brings destruction. But yet God's holy fire brings life and healing. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is that fire that I'm talking about this morning that we must be tested by. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 through 9, is our scripture that's very foundational here this morning that we are going to base this message on. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 through 9, it says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if you need be, you have grieved by various trials, that, you, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Now again, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6 through 9 talks about a suffering that we're going through as a believer in Christ. We rejoice, we are supposed to rejoice through Grieving. Now, what does grieving mean? The definition of grieved means what? It means to suffer. It means to suffer. That's what grieved means. Now, this morning, there are many people grieving. Just last night in Michigan, there was a man who went on a shooting rampage and killed six people just because he wanted to kill people. Some may blame that on mental illness. Some will blame that on the devil. But regardless of why it happened, it happened. And there's all kinds of suffering in this world. There's suffering of going through cancer. 
Suffering of, of having to bury a loved one way too early. Suffering of, of all kinds of things. But, but I want to talk to you this morning about the suffering again of what you experience when you suffer for being a Christian. See, because Jesus said they hated me, they will hate you. They persecuted me, they will persecute you. Now, some of us may not be going through a persecution like the church is going through right now in other parts of the world where they are being beheaded, where young Christian ladies are being raped in front of their fathers. Such an agonizing torture to see that, to witness your own daughter being violated that way. I cannot comprehend, understand the type of emotions, the type of suffering that brings to a, a heart of a human being. And we, we're so clueless to what is really happening in this world. There is such incredible suffering happening in this world. And I believe that the church in America is about to get an awakening, a, a revival, to understand that we must be apart. We must be separate from the things that are so wanting to entangle you and drown you and corrupt you into the very fires of hell. We have so much knowledge about so many things in this world, like uh, who, 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 who's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, you know, who, who, who created this, who did that. But yet we don't have no basic understanding of the Father in heaven who created you and I. And the Lord wants to change that. You will suffer. This is a message that is not very famous in many churches today throughout the world. Because if you read your Bible, not church doctrine, but if you read your Bible, the book of Acts, they began, that church was born through suffering. It endured through suffering, through persecution. And the way the church began, and to the way the church shall end in our day, will be greater suffering now than what it was written, as you see in the book of Acts. And if God's people do not understand that to suffer is what we will go through, it's, it's something that we are going to go through as believers in this world. If we're not tested by the fire of God, we, we're not going to make it, church. We're not going to make it. Today's churches are filled with messages that about how you can have a better career and a better life when the Bible says, do not have your mind on things below, but on things that are above. Now, there's nothing wrong with working hard and providing for your family. You have to do that. That, that is a responsibility that God has placed on us as leaders in our families to do. Work hard. Work faithfully. Work with your hands. Work, work, do everything you do, do it unto the Lord. Invest wisely. Spend wisely. Yes. But do it with an eternal perspective. The Bible says, store your treasures in heaven where a thief will not break in and steal, where no moth will go in and destroy and, and rust out. But today, so many churches do not understand the concept of being tested by fire. Tested by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Again, in 1 Peter 1, 6-9, Peter talks about if you have been grieved, it means have, if you have suffered by various trials, then greatly rejoice in these things. It, because it is like being more precious than gold. You are more precious than gold. Do you realize that gold, the, 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 the item that it is, do you realize that you're more precious than gold in the eyes of the Lord? Do you realize that this morning, church? Do you realize that God speaks to you as soon as you wake up in the morning, even before when you step out of your house? Who hears the birds chirping outside before they even step out of their house? That is the birds. That's God's creation reminding you that they don't have to go and look for food. It, it's there. It's provided for them. Now, I'm not saying you just sit in your house all day and God's going to bring you food and pay your light bills. That's not what I'm saying. But you must go and you, you do as far as God has called you to do, and God will take you the rest of the way. They sing, and they, they sing a song. I, I, the other morning I came out, and this one bird was on the top branch over here on this side of the church. And it was just singing and singing away. And, and I said, who are you singing to? And the Lord spoke to my heart and says, I'm singing to you. Don't you have a song to sing every morning, Michael? The Bible says that the Lord provides for the birds of the air. You're more precious. Don't you realize that? He'll provide for you too. But are you seeking Him? 
And see, the enemy will throw this curve at you where you have to go through trials and tribulations of many kinds. It's suffering for the name of Jesus. When you became a Christian, and I'm talking about a bona fide Christian, not someone that just says, oh, I'm a Christian, and they live like the devil. I'm talking about someone who is sold out for Jesus. You know how Jesus was sold out for you? He died on the cross. That's symbolic of what a Christian is. Are you willing to get up on a cross and die for Jesus? Are you willing to get up? You know, the song says there's room at the cross. Forget being that. There's, the, the, get on the cross. Get on, are you willing to get on the cross too? You see, when we suffer, it's breaking our will to fulfill the will of God in our lives. See, because inside every human being, you have a will. A will to do what you want to do. But Jesus said time and time again, I come to do the will of my Father. You hear that? Yes. So Jesus was presented, God in the flesh was presented with two wills. To do the will of the Father, or he even had a will. In the Garden of Gethsemane, there was a will of the flesh that was saying, oh, is there any other way to do this? But he says, but not in my will, but your will be done. Jesus was tested by fire. The Holy Spirit came upon him in the, Jordan, the river Jordan. The Holy Spirit is what led him out into the wilderness. It was the Holy Spirit that led him and spoke to him. It was the Holy Spirit that was with Jesus when the devil himself came after 40 days and nights of fasting and praying and said, if you are the Son of God, and today the devil will come to you, many devils will come to you, and they'll say, are you really a Christian? Are you really a child of the Most High God? Do you really believe that Jesus died for you? Do, do you really think that God can do all this? It's that same type of persecution, accusation, slander that comes from Satan that comes to you today. He was tested by the fire. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, he came as a man able to sin, but yet he was perfect in all his ways. He showed the world that if you walk in my steps, if you hear my voice, if you follow me, if you lay down your life for, for the sake of, of, of the kingdom of God, you will find it. If you lose your life, you shall find it. And today in churches, this is, not, this is the original gospel of Jesus Christ. It is not very complicated to, be, to, be, uh, 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 to follow in the ways of Christ. It is not complicated to understand this Bible. It's not very complicated. The Bible and the gospel of Jesus is very simple. The most uneducated people can understand that. But yet we have, we have just made it so complicated through religion through denominations, through, through theologians, and through uh, Bible colleges. It's very simple. The Lord will put His Holy Spirit, His fire in you. He'll open your mind, He'll open your heart, and He'll allow you to seek Him for yourself. He'll show you what truth is. You, got, you have to come to a point in your life, Christian, and I speak to many watching live on the internet, you have to come to a point, it's right here, it's right now, where truth is presented before you. Pilate looked at Jesus, and he said, what is truth? You know, Truth was staring at him right in the face. But yet he washed his hands. He didn't want to have nothing to do with it. Nothing has changed. People don't want to have nothing to do with the truth. But this is something that you and I, church, must go through. Every person in the world who confesses Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they will go through the fire. See, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. In Matthew chapter 24, you don't have to go there, but you can write it down. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 15 and on, it says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the, Daniel the prophet, it says, And let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is in the housetop not go down and take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation such as not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time nor there shall ever be. Unless those days were short, no flesh would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. This talks about the coming of the great tribulation. And my opinion, this is just my opinion. I could be wrong, but I could be right. I believe that we are in that period where there's a great tribulation beginning in the world. Great suffering, great persecution that is happening. And it said that these days would be unlike any other days the world has ever seen. Such evil. And we see that today, where people are beheading people in the world, putting it on the internet, and people from, from freedom-loving nations are fleeing to those groups to join them, only to come back 
to want to commit that terror here. It was just here in the Midwest of the United States last year that a woman in her job was beheaded by an Islamic terrorist. These people are here. They're not our enemy, but they're controlled by a demonic power that is unseen. Just like the people of God, we are led by an unseen power, the power of the Holy Spirit. We're being tested by the fire of God. And the Lord Jesus Christ tells the people in Matthew 24, he says, when you see this, now this was a twofold prophecy. It happened in A.D. 70, and it's happening today. So please pay attention. In A.D. 70, the Jews and the Christians were living in Jerusalem. And the Roman Empire came to destroy Jerusalem, to destroy anybody. They were, willing, they were ready to put down this, this Jewish people. They were ready to put down Jerusalem, and they did. And at that time, the Christians, they fled. And the Jews, they stayed in Jerusalem. They, they saw the abomination that was coming at that time. But you see, it's, and, and they fled to the wilderness. They fled to the mountains. When you go to the mountains, it, you, you're above the rest of society. Amen? When you go to the mountains, it is a place of refuge. Amen? Amen. When you go to the mountains, and that's what these people had to do. They had to flee to the mountains. They had to flee into the wilderness of Judea. They had to flee. But you see, that's what's happening today, church. A Christian, don't answer, but let me just ask you this, Christian. Let me just ask you this. Do you feel alone sometimes? Do you feel isolated sometimes? Do you feel like you're going through such a persecution like never before in your personal life? Do you feel that? Well, th that is what is happening in regards to Matthew 24. There is a great tribulation that is unveiling right now. That there is a, a presence of evil that is being unleashed in this world right now. There is something that is happening. And, and what is happening is the Lord is speaking to his people. He's saying, come out, be separate. He's leading his people into the wilderness. You see, when you go into the wilderness, and I'm spiritually speaking. See, because when this happened in AD 70, it was a physical wilderness they had to go to. But now it's being fulfilled all over again. But we're, the Lord is talking now about a spiritual wilderness. A spiritual wilderness. Please hear the Lord this morning. The Lord has taken his people into the wilderness, spiritually speaking. You feel like you're, you're just overcome by so much pressure from the world. You feel like the world is trying to conform you into an, its, its image. But your spirit is crying out. Your, your, your spirit is saying, no, I, I want to know Jesus. I, that there is something greater than what my physical eyes can see in this world. I, I, I know that God can do whatever he wants to do in my life. But you, you feel that resistance. You feel that fighting in you. You just don't want to let go of, of what your eyes can understand and what your physical ears seem to, to comprehend. But the Lord is pulling you. He's drawing you out. He says it in 2 Corinthians 6. And he also says it in the book of Revelation in regards to speaking to Babylon. He says, come out of her, my people. Be separate. Touch no unclean thing. And I will welcome you as a son and a daughter. In those two scriptures in the New Testament, he speaks to them. And that is what God is doing to the church worldwide today. You, you feel it. Earn, you don't know what it is. You, you don't know what the Bible says. You, you should, but you don't. You know you should read and apply it, but you don't. But you just know deep in your heart that God is calling on you. You know that God is trying to draw you to himself. You feel that, you sense that, you know that. And that is the, that is the faithfulness of the, of the Lord. He is not going to abandon you. He sees your hurt. He sees your suffering. And he wants to take you to a place of holiness and righteousness where he can, he can allow you to be transformed into the image of his very own son. And so we are being led by the Holy Spirit now into a place where, where all resources are gone. Even money says, in God we trust. Even money, American money, tries to re remember, remind the Christian, don't trust in that. Trust in God. And so the Holy Spirit is drawing us into a place of wilderness. And for the time being, some of you are there now, right? You're there now. And that's why you've been feeling alone. That's why you've been feeling attacked. That's why you've been feeling frustrated or even to the point of a depression. Remember Elijah? He had to go into that place of being alone, praying and fasting, wondering for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, what's going on, Lord? I thought I was the only, I think I'm the only one left. But it's going into that place of the wilderness 
where God is bringing a revival that you cannot comprehend to a place where only those who are willing to go will find that victory. I'm telling you, look, if we as a church, we as a society, the, the Bible clearly says in Matthew 24 that there will be a, a, an evil on this world that the world has never seen before, a, a type of suffering, a persecution, then there's also going to be, watch this, there's also going to be a victory that humanity has never experienced before either. Because God is not going to be outdone. The devil can rage and, and roar. That's what the Bible says. He prowls this world. He roams this earth, prowls like a roaring lion, looking who he may devour. That's what the word of God says. But Jesus Christ is not going to be outdone by Satan. This is not a war between Jesus and Satan. There is not a so-and-so versus so-and-so. Jesus has already conquered him. The war is between you and the devil. Jesus is not offended by Satan. Jesus is not at war with Satan. You are. I am. And if we run to the one who has already conquered the grave, we will find that victory. And in order to go where Jesus is, we must be willing to be tested by the fire. We must be willing to go into this wilderness that was spoken of in Matthew 24. A, a prophecy that is being unveiled before our very eyes. Let the reader understand, it says in verse 15. What does that mean? It means that at this time that this was written, being spoken of, Jesus Christ, the Bible wasn't even written yet. The New Testament. Jesus knew that this New Testament would be written for 2,000 years that people don't understand at the end of the church age that we have something to read. We are going into a wilderness. We are going into a wilderness. And that's where we're going right now. Some of you have such a fire in your heart for God. You don't know how it got there. You don't know why it got there. But it's there. And you're willing to go with Jesus all the way. Amen? You're willing to say, you know what? I know what the world has to offer. I know what the devil ha has to say. I know what the devil has to, what has to do with this world. But I don't want it. I'm done with this. Amen. Now, our battle is not with flesh and blood. Our battle is not with your boss at work. Not with your family who drinks and smokes. No, no, no. Our battle is with the devil. It's with every fallen angel. That's who our battle is with. Unseen powers. We need to love those that are in sin to the cross of Jesus. We need to pray for them, love them, but not be entertained by their sinful acts. And that's what happens when Christians turn the TV on and they're entertained by the Kardashians. They're entertained by all these types of shows that have so much immorality. They, uh, they entertain the eye and it goes into your brain and into your heart. And that's why we have such adul adultery and immorality in the church today. Divorce like never before. That's why we see so many homes, Christian homes, as well as homes that don't know Christ. So many divorce. So much divorce happening. Because Satan has found a foothold to get into the house. And he's destroying homes. Look, the Lord almost destroyed my family in 2003. If it was not for Jesus, I would not be standing here today. My kids would be scattered to the four winds. But because and only because of Jesus, my wife and I are going on 23 years of marriage. And my kids, the, the, we've done what we could. They're, they're adult age now. They're, they're, they're accountable for themselves. But we did what we could. We told them about Jesus. And now they're walking with Christ. And it's all only because of Jesus. So I give Jesus all the glory for that. Because that had nothing to do with me or my wife. But with Jesus. Amen. It was Jesus alone. And to Him be the glory. But I can understand how the devil is trying to come and destroy. To destroy the home. He's coming to destroy the family. He's coming to cause separation. The, the Bible says that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus comes that you may have life and life abundantly. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 19. Peter goes on to speak. And I'm, I'm going to read this out of a looser translation. It's still the same Meaning, but it's, it's, I usually read out of the New King James Version, but I believe this is uh, out of the New Living Translation or the Good News Translation. Just wanted to let you know that, okay? 
But it says, my dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful test you are suffering as though something unusual were happening to you. Who can identify with that this morning? Rather be glad that you are sharing Christ's suffering so that you may be full of joy when his glory is revealed. Happy are you if you are insulted because of being Christ's followers. This means that the glorious Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, is resting on you. If you suffer, though, it must not be because you are a murderer or a thief or a criminal or a meddler in other people's affairs. However, if you suffer, it is because you are a Christian. Don't be ashamed of it, but thank God that you bear Jesus Christ's name. The time has come for judgment to begin, and God's own people are the first to be judged. I hear that all the time. You can't judge me. You can't judge me. Well, you know what? As a Christian, we cannot judge the world. But the Bible clearly teaches judgment begins in the house of God. And Paul even, um, Paul even talks about that we can judge in the house of God. I cannot judge what's happening going on in the world with people who don't know Christ. That's God's business. But the Bible clearly, if you know what the Bible teaches, we as Christians can judge what's going on in our family. Do, we are the body of Christ. Amen? What makes you my brother and sister in Christ? It's the blood of Jesus. Now watch this powerful teaching. My sister sits up there in the balcony. But because she's my sister, it's because of the blood of my father. Amen? But the blood of my heavenly father spiritually makes us brothers and sisters. And therefore, if we can talk what's going on in our family and judge things, how much more important in the family of God? We can talk about what's going wrong in the family of God. We, we can render judgments and say, you know what, that's not right. Amen? And it is time, it says, the time has come for judgment to begin. And God's own people are the first to be judged. And how does God judge? He judges through His body, through His hands, through His feet, through His eyes, through you, through us. He holds us all accountable to each other, and eventually unto Him. If it starts with us, how will it end with those who do not believe the good news from God? If judgment begins here, then what's going to happen to those who don't know God eventually? Because judgment's going to begin in the house of God, and it's going to overflow into society. As the scripture says, it is difficult for good people to be saved. What then will become of godless sinners? So then, those who suffer because it is God's will for them should by their good actions trust themselves completely to their creator who always keeps his promise. Now, what is this saying? They're saying, it is not going to come so easily, this walk with Jesus. But it is very possible. They even told Jesus, how can this be? And Jesus said, with men it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And this walk with Jesus is possible. My friends, we are on that day and age when judgment begins in the house of the Lord. But what happens when judgment begins and there's no fear of God in his house? Those who are fathers or mothers, you understand what I'm saying. When your children have no fear of you having authority over them. Now, one way we understand of giving, putting fear over them is by whipping them. Amen? But you see, that's not what God wants to do. You see, when we say fear in human language... That wants to make the other person run away. If I hear that so-and-so wants to beat me up, then I have a fear of him now because I don't want to get beat up. So, humanly speaking, fear, that word drives us away from each other. But when we say fear in reference to God, it is to draw us closer to him. Because not that we're afraid that he's going to hit us in the head with a hammer. No. But that if we do something foolish... We can suffer that fate for eternal in a lake of fire. And so therefore, we have the fear of God and we respect and honor God and we love Him. And so therefore, it does the total opposite. It draws us closer to Him. But if there's no fear of God in the house today, and there's not, and judgment begins, many are not going to make it. And that's why Jesus said, the road to hell is wide and many shall find it. Jesus goes on to say, but the road to heaven is narrow. And only a few shall find it. He says, many are called, but only a few are chosen. This is a matter of your, of your soul. You're going to go through suffering. 
But if you're going to suffer, it's not because of murder. I, I, for many years, I was a part of the prison, and our church still is, deals with the prison system. But I would speak for years to these men, week in and week out. They'd come up to me and say, oh, I'm suffering. I'm like, why are you suffering? Oh, well, I, I killed somebody. I'm like, well, that's not suffering. And I take them to the scripture. If you're going to suffer, it's because of the name of Jesus. But if you're a murderer or a thief or criminal, that's not suffering. You brought that on yourself. And so that's what I'm talking about this morning. You're suffering for the sake of righteousness. You know what? It, it, it's easy. And just agree with me. Because many of you will say, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's easy to steal. It's easy to lie. It's easy to cheat. Yes, it is. But what's not easy is to tell the truth, to do what God would expect you to do. It's not easy because you have so many around you drawing you to the place of compromise. And therefore, that is a type of suffering. You're being transformed into the image of Jesus every day with every opportunity, that, that, everything that you face. So don't think that this is just something crazy happening to you. The Lord is leading you into the wilderness to a mountain. To a place above society. Because judgment is coming. He is a God of grace and mercy, but he is also a God of wrath and judgment. And for 2,000 years, the world has seen the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. And now... The wrath and the judgment of God is about to be revealed to the world. I'm telling you this, and God loves all of humanity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For Jesus did not come into the world to condemn it, but to save it. The Father sent him. And so, are we suffering for the name of Christ? Are we suffering are we going through the fire? Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to burn up everything in us that doesn't belong? Only to reveal the purity of Jesus in us. When God looks at you, my brother, my sister, when our Father looks at you, He must see His Son in you. When you look at the mirror in your, in every morning, you combing your hair, right? <laughs> You're, all this stuff. You can't see you anymore. Can you see Jesus in, in your reflection now? Can you see Jesus in your life now? Can you see Jesus? See, because that's what God wants to see, His Son in you. See, that, that's your salvation. That's your redemption. It's not, what you, it's not just what you confess, but it's also what you do. You're not saved by your works, but you're saved unto works. John 16, 33 Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you. Everything I've spoken about this morning, that, that's what the Lord is speaking. John 16, 33. Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me, meaning in Jesus, and only in Jesus, he says that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome. So when you go through that trial and tribulation, what do you say? But Jesus is overcome. When you're faced with that bad news, but Jesus is overcome. So if you're in Christ, you are an overcomer. You're not, uh, you're not being cast down to the very fires of hell. Hell is a real place. Hell wants you. Hell desires you. But God desires that you be at his throne. That you know the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. Taste him and see that he is good. The truth about Christianity. God wants to transform us into the image of his son. There is life in his son. There is peace in his son. There is joy in his son. This is an everyday process. If we are not willing to allow God to reveal the change that is necessary as Christians, then we are fighting against Him. And all who have ever fought against God have lost. We must understand that. So Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10 through 13. 
Paul speaks to this young pastor, Timothy. And I believe he's speaking to the church today. He says, but you, Timothy. And he says, really, to the church. He says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, my faith, my long-suffering, my love, my perseverance, my persecution." persecutions, my afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch and Lystra and Iconium, what persecutions I endured I have. And out of all of them, all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse deceiving and being deceived the world is going two ways their people are going to become even more and more corrupt and the other people are going to go more become more and more godly do you see the difference do you see the nation how the nation is greatly divided right now do you see that what i'm saying i mean it's either for god or against god you see how jesus is front and center in politics and everything you see, there's always been a teaching where, oh, separation of church and state. Why would you want to separate God from your politics? Why would you want to separate Jesus from the way you vote? Why would you want to separate Jesus from every part of your life, right? When it comes to tax time, I bet you're praying, aren't you? Right? When it comes to tax time, oh, Lord, give me mercy. Well, what about separation of church and state, right? It's only when it benefits you. Jesus should be in every part of our life, Christian. But yet, we see how there is only two roads that we're going to have to choose from. And Jesus says it to the last church, because you're lukewarm, because you're neither hot or cold, I will reject you. I will spit you out of my mouth. Guys, this is the persecution. This is the suffering that we're talking about. We have to be on fire for God. Or be put on fire by the fires of hell. Either way, we're going to be on fire. Either way, we're going to be on fire. We must be tested by the fire of God, the Holy Spirit. In my last scripture, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 through 11. Be sober, says Peter. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, this is a scripture with, with, with warning and instruction. See, we've been warning. We've been talking about the situation, right? Now the Lord says, here's the instruction. The devil's there like a roaring lion. So what is the instruction today? Resist him. Say no. What would you do to a burglar trying to come into your house? You got something waiting for him. Most in Texas have something waiting for him. Amen? Am I right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Those watching live on the internet, you may not understand that. But in Texas, we, just, we, we see things a little different down here. <laughs> but we have something waiting for them that try to break into our house. We love the Lord and we trust in the Lord. Amen? Amen. And we believe in, they slap us in the right, the one cheek we turn the other. But, you know, uh, our daddy didn't raise no fools either. Right. And we're not at battle with flesh and blood, but we understand that there is a responsibility on our part. I'm reminded of the preachers in the Revolutionary War. They never put their Bible. The history says that they put their Bible down and picked up their gun and went to fight. They did not do that. They never put the Word of God down. More, for, more importantly, they, they did pick up that gun to go fight. And if they had not done that, we would not be here today. That's right. Amen. That's right. There comes a time when we do have to fight comes a time when we do have to, the, the Lord wants us to be at peace at all times if possible, but it's not, possible. it's not always possible. But we need to give the peace that Jesus says, I give you. We need to receive that. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
But here's the instruction. Resist the devil. Be steadfast in the faith, meaning be consistent. You know what you're supposed to do, right? Do it. Do it. When you were a, a sinner, you knew what to do. And you did it. Amen? And you did it good. Some of you did it real good. But now that you know the Word of God, and the Word of God knows you, you know what to do. Do it. James says, don't be a hearer, just be a doer. James says, you say you have a faith? Well, I'll show you my faith by my works. Here's the evidence. I'm not just saying it, said James, but I'm showing you. I'm saved unto works. I have faith and works. We're saved by the work of Jesus, but we're saved unto works. So do it. Resist him. Be steadfast in the faith. And realize, it says, know that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Realize you're not the only one going through all this drama. Do you think you're the only unique person in the world that's going through what you're going through right now? Do you realize that what you're going through right now, that it did not catch God by surprise? Do you know that the Lord already knew this? You were going to be going through this in your time of your life? So how can you get out of this mess? Trust in Him. Amen. Resist the devil. Rejoice. Basically what He's saying, all that makes no sense in the world, that's what you do. The world will laugh and like, I don't make no sense what you're just doing. Well, it makes sense to God. And I'd rather do what makes sense to God than, than what would make sense to the world. You get what I'm saying? I'm not a very bright person, but I can understand that. And I believe you can too. Realize. So it's resist him. Be steadfast in the faith. And realize that this suffering is going to, on to many, not just you. And after you have suffered a while, not for eternity... Amen. Not for 10 years. After you've suffered for a while, you'll be perfected. You will establish your strength and he will settle you. And you'll see the Lord. You'll see the Lord. So what does being a Christian mean to you? Does it mean singing Christian songs? Does it mean going to church? Does it mean serving in the church in a variety of positions? What, what does being a Christian mean to you? A Christian is a human being walking the same path that Jesus walked, being tested by the fire of God. That's all we're going through. We're just being tested by the fire of God. So rejoice. Rejoice. Receive that word in Jesus' name. Amen? Give God praise in His house.